Good afternoon and welcome to Fortress Press Live, where we connect you with the people and passions behind the books we publish here at Fortress Press. Our guest today is Jerry Sumney, and we'll be talking about both the print and inkling editions of his book, The Bible, an Introduction, Second Edition. Jerry, thanks for being a part of today's episode of Fortress Press Live. It's very good to be here with you. Why don't you take a few minutes and introduce yourself to the Fortress Press Live audience and tell us about your teaching role there at Lexington Theological Seminary. Well, I started teaching, actually, in undergraduate school and taught undergraduates for about 10 years before I came here to Lexington Seminary. And here I teach mostly New Testament courses, everything from the very beginning through the advanced courses. And when I first came, I taught an introduction to the Bible. Well, that's a good lead into our next question, because today we're talking about your book, The Bible, an Introduction, which Fortress Press has just released in its second edition. Now, every book has a unique backstory. I'd be curious to hear a bit about how this book got its start. Well, I guess initially it started with even teaching undergraduates. And I would see just what students did not know about the Bible and what they thought they knew that was either wrong or harmful. And then when I came to the seminary, actually one of the first courses that I was assigned to teach was a new course that introduced the whole Bible. So it really began with me addressing students who needed some really beginning knowledge about the Bible. And when it comes to the the needs of the students, I'd be curious, when you were putting this book together, was there a particular gap or need or or possibly something that wasn't addressed by other textbooks that you were trying to fill as you were putting this book together? Well, there were a number of things that led me to write this sort of book. The biggest thing is simply the lack of knowledge of the Bible, whether it's in our culture or even in our churches, as it's seen in our students. So many students come to college or come to seminary without church background and so know very little about what's in the Bible. So hopefully this can begin to fill in some of the gap simply of a lack of knowledge. I think the other thing it does that I saw missing in a lot of books was to emphasize that the Bible is actually a religious book. That is, while we don't have to be people who believe, you know, the kinds of things that folks find in the Bible, often introductions didn't really say much about the religious message that these authors wanted to convey. And if we're going to know what really is in the Bible, we're going to have to discern what it is that the texts want to say, whether we think they're right or not is another matter, but we certainly want to be able to hear them clearly. And I just didn't see introductory textbooks pointing readers in that direction. Sort of a related question. When you were writing the book, were there certain parts of the academy that you had in mind? I'm curious to hear your thoughts on would this work for an undergraduate class as well as a early level seminary class. Where do you see the book fitting? Well, as I began to write it, the main thing I had in mind was that it would be a very accessible text. So beginning with people who are sort of beginning undergraduates, but it was also the kind of information that beginning seminary students who didn't have any sort of religious studies background would need. And even the kinds of things that folks who were sort of striving even in other communities outside the academic community to try to figure out what's actually in these texts. So it does aim for a very broad audience. Okay, that's helpful. So it sounds like it could be used either at an undergraduate level or, like you said, in in early seminary. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at the way the book is organized, you kind of focus on helping students to answer or consider three specific questions. I was curious if you'd take a few minutes and walk us through these three sections of the book. Okay. Well, the first section is, what is the Bible and how did it come about? That section, I think, is important because there's a lot of misinformation about where the Bible came from, everywhere from Dan Brown and the Da Vinci Code to people who think it fell from the sky. And so I wanted to try to give a balanced account, first of all, of how the books of the canon actually came together. That is sort of the timing and 
how the books were evaluated and things like that. Then I wanted to be able to talk about how the text was transmitted to us, and even then some talk about textual criticism and about translations. And finally, how people have talked about the question of inspiration. Again, recognizing that this is a religious book, as the Bible is a religious book, we have to recognize that people have claimed that somehow God speaks through it. And so a look at the ways that people have understood what the claim that the Bible's inspired really is. So that's sort of the first section about what the Bible is and where it came from. The second section is what's the story of the Hebrew Bible? The Hebrew Bible, for sort of your broad audience, is pretty much unknown and misunderstood. And I think it's important to get the view of the whole narrative of individual books and the narrative even of the way that the canon is put together so that we don't get the wrong ideas. An example is the way that people read some of the stories about God smiting people here and there and come away with the idea that these texts want to say that God is mean or angry or other kinds of things, where if you read the whole narrative, you get a very different impression. So I wanted to be able to sort of tell the story as a whole, again, for each book and for the narrative as the canon in a way that is truer to what the texts themselves want to say. They want to be able to talk about who God is and what Israel's relationship with that God is and even what the world's relationship is. So in a sense, I want to let the text say what it wants to say to the readers. Finally, in the third section where the story of the New Testament, I think there's the same kind of misunderstanding there where we get just a few snippets or very familiar stories. And we miss the larger thing that these writers want to say. So we look at whole books and their authors and look at the diversity that you find that's the case with both the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament. So that we, in a sense, get both sort of a, a clearer picture and a more diverse picture than what we usually get when we look at these texts. Well, that was very helpful. Thanks so much for that overview. As we mentioned earlier, the Bible and Introduction has just been released in its second edition. I was wondering if you could talk us through a few of the important or key changes that folks are going to find when they look at the new edition. One of the things that we did when we started to do a new edition is to contact users and to look at reviews of the book and try to respond to some of the things that they said might be helpful. And so some of the changes come from those sources. One of the new things that we added is an index that discusses alternative reading strategies. Most of this textbook uses the historical critical method, the, the method that sets the text in its own time and tries to analyze it there. But of course, that's not the only way that people now read texts. And so this new section talks about structuralist criticism, canonical criticism, narrative criticism, various kinds of advocacy readings, and other sorts of things that acknowledge that people read the Bible with different lenses for very different reasons. Another one of the changes that we did is that we removed from text boxes a lot of the quotations of biblical texts that were there. Some users wanted their students to have to go find those passages in the Bible. And so we replaced those quotations with leading questions that often take them to the very same texts, but sort of require the students now to develop some familiarity with the Bible as a book itself. We also added some higher order questions at the ends of chapters that are parts of the, the review questions. And we clarified and expanded some elements of the text itself, places where perhaps as I went through, it looked as though some things had been simplified beyond what they probably should. And of course, we updated the bibliographies at the end of the chapters as well. Thanks for sharing with us about the things that have been changed in the second edition. 
one of the things we were talking about before we started the interview is that the Bible and Introduction Second Edition is one of several Fortress Press textbooks uh, that's now available on the Inkling platform. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts uh, on this new platform and how you see digital resources like this being an, an important new form of distribution in the education marketplace. I think this opens up all kinds of exciting new vistas for students. As I was first introduced to Inkling, it just allowed folks to do all kinds of things that you don't get to do in a textbook. It allows students who are interested in art or archaeology or other kinds of history to find immediate kinds of links. So instead of just the kind of call-out boxes that are possible to have in a written text, now you can have additional information show up just by running your cursor over the picture or over a hot word or whatever you find in the text. So besides having the whole text and the summaries and even the primary sources that come from the study companion, there are all kinds of extras, kinds of information, often in 100 words. So a student can get a very quick summary or even history of where a painting came from or what an archaeological site is like. But also it's got links to other kinds of encyclopedias. So that if you find a name, for example, somebody like Marcion, you can go click that name and it will send you to an encyclopedia or dictionary article on that name. So you just have so many more resources at hand than you have in the textbook, in the print form. I also think it's a great advantage to be able to do a full text search. Those kinds of things are always helpful to me when I need to study a particular thing. I can go to a book, and if I can do a search on just a few words that I know will be the main ones it'll come up with, then I can very quickly find information that it might take me a lot longer to find. And I think that'll be very helpful to students. Well, and one of the things that I've really found helpful with the Inkling platform is whether you have a, a Mac or a, a PC laptop or you have uh, an Android device or a, an Apple iOS device, you can access the Inkling books on any of those platforms or all of those platforms. So I just really have appreciated how versatile it is that I can get to it just about anywhere. Yeah, it's, it's hard to believe that you can carry around a textbook in your phone, basically. <laughs> so it does make reading and studying very convenient. Well, and one of the other key things I think listeners need to know about this textbook is that there are a significant number of additional or supporting resources. Talk to us about some of the bonus materials uh, that are available for professors and students. Well, the Fortress Press website has a number of things that help with how to use the book as a textbook, some things about how to teach. There are a number of very short kinds of videos that I have that help with sort of what the main points of the chapters are, give a very quick overview. One of the ways that some of the summary can help you with as a teacher is to try to use the text as an additional resource so that if you come with your own emphases, you can use the text as a basis for discussion, especially for discussion of kinds of student presuppositions. So you bring a particular perspective. The textbook may have a bit different one, and that gives you a way to start talking with students about the way they go about understanding these texts. For people who are not in the field of biblical studies, as I noted, there are those videos that introduce each chapter. There are also those sections at the end of each chapter for further reading. And one of the features of those is that they begin with some fairly accessible materials and move to things that are a little bit more complicated so that as professors, you can move to those materials that are a little more detailed while your students can also profit from the ones that are introductory. I know when I first started teaching outside of my field, it was sometimes 
looking for those resources that would keep me just ahead of the students. <laughs> and so some of those kinds of resources are listed there as well. There's also some information for tests and even examples of tests that are available there on the Fortress Press website. So tests and answer keys. Some folks have used those tests. Some have given them to students to study with. There are also sample syllabi online, and some of those are for a one-semester course, and some of those are for a two-semester course. So you can get some idea about ways to work through the text and the number of weeks that you find in either a semester or a year-long course. And I understand there's also a study companion available for students as well? There is. It has a good bit of material that adds primary sources that are parallels to what we talk about in the textbook so that if I mention, for example, the Epic of Gilgamesh, a part of that text will then be in the study companion. And of course, those features are also found on the Inkling site. There are also in the study companions some extra questions, sort of leading questions that may help students think more about the subject than what gets covered in the textbook. They're already in the textbook itself, sort of keyword sections and study questions and even a glossary, but the study companion pushes students even past those if they want to do especially some independent work. Well, thank you for that overview of the additional resources. Uh, If the listeners are interested in finding more about those and about the Bible and Introduction 2nd Edition, you can either take a look at the show notes for this episode, or you can also visit our website, which you'll find at fortresspress.com. Jerry, thanks so much for being generous with your time today and sharing with us about the Bible and Introduction 2nd Edition. Well, it's good to be with you. Goodbye. As Episode 3 of Fortress Press Live comes to a close, I want to wrap up with a brief message to our listeners. Again, many thanks for being a part of my conversation today with Jerry Sumney. To view the show notes for this episode or leave a comment, head over to fplive.fortresspress.com forward slash 003. While you're there, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite content delivery network. Fortress Press Live is available via iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and even YouTube. Until next time, this is your host Sean Tabbitt, signing off.